Well, good evening, and we're glad you're tuning in on this Wednesday after Easter. We're praising the Lord for all God did on Easter Sunday. We're also very thankful for all the volunteers that helped, some at one, uh, or one service, some at the other, and some at both. So thank God for all of our volunteers at both campuses who volunteered. We just uh, thank God for you, and man, uh, without your faithfulness, uh, just things don't uh, work out you know, and we need you, and we thank God for all that, that happened and all the lives that were touched. Uh, this, this evening, we're on our last of our series, Keeping Your Eyes on the Prize, as we've been looking at Philippians chapter 3, we've got 21 verses, we're going to wrap up that today. So if you have your Bibles, uh, open up to Philippians chapter 3, uh, we'll be looking at verse 20 as we start out. So, uh, let's have a word of prayer before we begin. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that you'd speak to us, Lord, today, God, and wherever we are in our life, that this word would be applicable, Lord, and God, we'd have ears to hear what you want to share to us, Lord. So, God, uh, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of your word, Lord, able to change our lives, Father, and we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, here's where we've been up to this point about comparing uh, the regular earthly runner to the Christian runner. Number one, that you got to legally be in the race as a runner. You got to legally be in the race as a Christian runner and be saved. And so both of them would be very embarrassing to get to the end and not be legally in there. So we got to be saved to be in the Christian race. Number two, runners know the principle you have to give up to gain. And we know that as well as a Christian runner. There's times where we give up but it's always going to be to give up to gain something even better. The other one is we must be always developing as a regular earthly runner. They got to keep developing with zeal and getting better. We as Christian runners have to do that as well. Be maturing, growing, not being content. Yes, content with what we have, but not content with our where we are spiritually in our walk. We got to continue to press on with zeal to be uh, a better Christian runner to be more faithful, to be more dedicated. Also, too, we need to be focused without distractions. You know, that the regular runner, he doesn't need to be looking behind him, beside him. He needs to be looking forward, not be distracted by people, by the stands, by people in the stands. Just focus on the Lord. And uh, also, too, we've got to be able to receive correction and make adjustments. The runner's they need coaches to say, hey, this is something you're not doing right, and you make the adjustment. We've got to do that as well as a Christian runner. And then we have, need to have role models. Runners have role models that they look at. We as Christians, ultimately our role model is Jesus, but the Lord's placed people in our life. Yes, they may disappoint us, but we can look to them and glean things from their life that will help us. Then verses 18 and 19, we actually had those verses on our first point because they tied in as extra information there. So we've already covered verse 18 and 19. Now we're in verse 20. And our eighth point is that runners, Olympic runners anyway, represent a nation. And we represent a heavenly nation as well. So it says, for our citizenship in verse 20 is in heaven from which also we eagerly, we eagerly wait for a savior the Lord Jesus Christ. Citizenship in heaven. Uh, yes, we're here on earth, but we have citizenship in heaven. And uh, that's going to be important as we look at this uh, passage. Uh, first of all, when you were in Philippi, obviously this letter was written to the Philippians living in the town of Philippi. It was important for a family once they... Uh, had a child, a young child, they wanted to make sure that that child got registered uh, and registered as a Roman citizen. Even though they didn't live in Rome, they could be a Roman citizen, and that was important. First of all, it's important to get your name registered. <laughs> Look at all the places talks about that, just a few of them. Philippians 4.3 says, And the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Revelation 20, 15. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown in the lake of fire. Luke 10, 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, 
that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. So having names written in heaven is ultimately important. And to Roman people, they want to make sure their names were recorded as Roman citizens. And in heaven's important to us, but Rome was important to them to be a Roman citizen. These are just a few verses. I just took portions of these verses just to emphasize how important it was to be a Roman. Acts 16, 21, being Romans, and you know, it says, in Acts 16, 38, they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans. In Acts 21, 39, Paul said, uh, uh, he talked about being a Jew, and then he talked about a citizen of no insignificant city, which he was talking about Rome. Acts 22, 25, is it lawful for you to scourge a man who is a Roman and uncondemned? And using that, because, uh, you know, Romans had rights, uh, special privileges. Uh, matter of fact, that's why Paul was beheaded and not crucified because a Roman citizen couldn't be crucified. Uh, they were exempt from that. So there were all kind of privileges that came from being a Roman citizen. We have privileges even here on earth by being a heavenly citizen. Yes, sometimes it's persecution, but we all, we have the blessings that God gives us as well by having that heavenly citizenship. You know, most citizens of a country, they, that country has an official language. Uh, we ought to be speaking the heavenly language even here on earth because of our heavenly citizenship. You know, countries have laws. And even though, yes, we obey the laws of our land here, we also need to be bit abiding by the laws of our where our citizenship is, and that's in heaven, and obey the heavenly laws. And if the earthly laws conflict the heavenly laws, we're more bound to the heavenly laws, you know, than we are even the earthly when they contradict each other. So, uh, you know, yes, we're heavenly citizens. You know, I guess you could say here on earth, we're really just visitors so to speak. We're only here for a short time to make a short visit, but in heaven, we're there for eternity. That's a lot lot longer uh, than our short visit here. We always need to keep that in perspective in our life that no matter how bad it gets, it's still a short visit. Our eternity in heaven is where our lasting life will be. And so we need to keep that in mind and know and represent our country well. You know, when you watch the Olympics, uh, you realize, you know, especially at that ending ceremony when the runner stands on the top of the platform, they raise the flag of his country and they play that country's national anthem. Well, that can, that can raise some goosebumps on you there when you watch that. Such a special moment in time, such a pride such a time of pride for that nation to see that one of their citizens has represented them so well that they got the gold medal and that country's flag got elevated and that country's national anthem was played and people from that nation feel the pride uh, that happens at that moment. Why that runner all throughout their life, I'm sure were making sacrifices and they were probably thinking, is this worth, worth it and can I keep on keeping on? Well, I believe part of that had to do is I want to represent my country well. And I want to stand up there and have our nation be the one that's elevated. And so we as well can get discouraged, but we need to keep saying, hey, we're running this race, not just for ourselves. We're running it to represent our heavenly nation well, where our citizenship is to, to get the gold, so to speak. But that gold is for Jesus. Even what rewards we get, we give to him but we run it well because we're running uh, for him. And then that passage goes on to say, to eagerly eagerly wait for a savior, not just wait for a savior. That's one thing to just be waiting, but eagerly waiting, that's something else. You ever, you know, and so we're not looking forward necessarily for an event, we're looking forward for a person. You know, when you have a get together, maybe at your house and, you know, whether it's a party or reunion or whatever, you you're looking forward maybe to seeing that uncle or that aunt or a cousin or a parent or a grandparent, somebody you hadn't seen for a long, long time. 
And you're not eagerly awaiting an event. You're eagerly awaiting a person because you want to see them. You want to visit with them. You want to hug them. And, and so you're eagerly awaiting. You can't wait for that car to pull up. Well, that's the way it is for us. We're not necessarily eagerly awaiting an event as much as we're eagerly awaiting Jesus. When he returns, that we'll see him. And our life as a runner needs to be committed to where we won't be embarrassed. And we'll be happy to see him because we're eagerly awaiting his return. And so uh, that's how the passage continues on. That Not only a citizen, but eagerly awaiting a person, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and then the last verse says, who will transform the body of our humble state into the conformity with the body of his glory, with the exertion of the power that he has even to be subject all things to himself. You know, that's the goal, to be like Christ, being transformed. Yes, we'll ultimately transformed our body uh, to a glorified body, but we're also being transformed even now to be more like Christ. At least that's what our goal should be. That's part of the prize is to becoming more and more like Christ, more like Christ than we were last year, be more like Christ than we are next year, uh, using the good and bad circumstances, his word, Bible studies, church service, all things, trying to use those things to conform us to his image as we allow those things to work on us. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. We're becoming more like him. We're, we're being transformed uh, to Christ. And one day we'll be fully transformed when we get our, our new glorified bodies. It's all by his power, that verse says. And it says that he has even to subject all things to himself. He has power over everything and all things need to be subject to him. That word subject means to arrange and rank in order. <laughs> we need to have everything in order according to Christ, his power and his might. We need to line it up and be subject to him in all things. You know, when a device or a piece of equipment is broke, we call it out of order. You know, when we get out of order, we're not operating correctly. We're not functioning right. We're, so to speak, broke. And we wonder why things are the way they are, but we need to put things in order, obviously him first, so that we're arranging things in order that they should be and be eagerly awaiting his return as we wait. Not just wait, but eagerly wait. So those are the things that the Christian runner focuses in on. Those are the things that the Christian runner focuses in on so that when we see our Savior, we on that day will have those crowns because that's our reward, the rewards that we will receive and that we can give those to our Savior when we meet him. So we're glad that you've joined us and that we pray that uh, this series has been a blessing to you. Let's end in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your word, God. God, may we continue to run this race, Lord, with the zeal and the passion, Lord, as we represent you well. And Lord, as we gain those rewards that we want to give to you on that day. So Father, help us to keep that in our mind. Even in the midst of difficulty, even wanting to give up, Lord, we'll be motivated and have the passion we need to have to be all that we can be for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, just a few closing words. Got a lot of men and ladies events coming up in April. Uh, April 17th, our ladies will be meeting in spring. Uh, we'll go over meet more details on all these later on. The ladies in Magnolia will have an event uh, on April the 20th. The men will have an event on, uh, in spring on April the 24th. And men here at Magnolia, uh, we have a men's dinner this Friday night at 7 o'clock. So uh, ladies and men on all these events, not only show up, but bring somebody with you and they'll be blessed. Uh, also, we've got a new lift study coming up this Sunday. Uh, it's both campuses, uh, knowing God, a journey into knowing God as we follow up on our Easter Sunday, uh, knowing the names of God as we know God better. So be part of this lift study. 
you'll be blessed. Give it a try if you've never been to Lyft. You've been out of Lyft, get back in for this new study and you'll be blessed. Also, our youth and kids uh, bake sale for camp will be this Sunday, so don't miss that. Also, on the 18th, we've got our uh, journey classes that'll be going on uh, on April 18th. You can get more details on that. We'll be giving the times and all that as well, so mark that down on your calendar. And uh, just a lot of things going on. We praise the Lord that for what God's doing, and we rejoice in that. I love you. I praise the Lord for you. And uh, just look forward to seeing you real soon. God bless you.